Hello, my name is Michelle, and you're listening to Profit is a Choice. Today, we're going to talk about leadership. As many of us are growing our teams, we should consider how our role, and perhaps that of some of our team, is shifting into more of a leadership focus and not just executing the details. Hang with us as we look into leadership. Every day, empowered entrepreneurs are taking ownership of their company financial health and enjoying the rewards of reduced stress and more creativity. With my background as a financial software developer, owner of multiple businesses in the interior design industry, educator and speaker, I coach women in the interior design industry to increase their profits, regain ownership of their bottom line, and to have fun again in their business. Welcome to Profit is a Choice. Okay, so our teams are growing and we're hiring more resources to do the work. And that's great. But somebody has to not only do the work, but manage the work and manage the project and manage the company and lead and grow the team. And my question is, is that you? In online forums and in discussions with my clients and friends lately, I hear a lot of owners looking to hire and they're having a lot of conversation around that. But I never hear them having a management and a leadership plan that they talk about and consistently update. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that nobody has this plan, but they're not actively talking about it. We talk about leadership with things like I have standard operating procedures or we have job descriptions or maybe we look at the fact that we bring pizza in on Friday and picnics outside and ice cream Sundays and as you know, a leadership tool. And those are great. Don't get me wrong. Love all of that team building, but it's not full-blown leadership. John C. Maxwell is one of my favorite authors on leadership and business management. And he defines leadership as influence in his book, Developing the Leader Within You. And all of the books that I mentioned today, I will put into the show notes. James C. George says this, what is leadership? Remove for a moment the moral issues behind it, and there is only one definition. Leadership is the ability to obtain followers. We all have the ability to influence someone, but what makes great leadership great is the ability to influence others for good. You know, currently we're seeing a lot around the term influencer, and we've seen social influencers, product influencers. It happens in all industries and and it's becoming more and more of a thing, especially with marketing and product placement. People are out trying to get others to follow them in their purchasing habits so that they then make money by sending, you know, potential buyers to look at the product and to purchase. So in that sense, we all kind of know what an influencer is. But what about the quieter ways that we have of influencing and leading inside of our own organization? Um, I've said it many times, and I didn't make it up, uh, so it's not mine, but you probably heard it as well, that people leave bad managers, not bad companies. And that's because the manager is also supposed to be a leader or an influencer. Imagine for a minute if we all just really sat back and considered who we are influencing daily. We're leading every day based on our character, our abilities, our competence, our actions, and our connections, who we know and what we know. We are leaders within our friend groups. We are leaders within our home. We are leaders on Facebook and other social media outlets when we give our opinions. We are influencing and leading people with everything we do. When my kids were little, I remember reading something along the lines of, be careful where you walk, little ones are following. And maybe you've heard similar, you know, and and the fact that people watch more of what you do than what you say. And we're all familiar with leaders, good and bad, right? I mean, you can just look at the news and you can probably find both and some all, all in the middle. I would ask this question, how do we define ourselves as leaders? And what do we think we're doing well to influence our team? What are we using to influence them with? And what are we influencing them to do? Are our actions as leaders and our words in alignment with the values that we've said the company was created um, with and that stands upon? 
See, being a leader is not a title or a job position. It's actually a way of living and working and communicating within a relationship. The statement, you are the sum of the five people you spend the most time with, really is true. And if we're spending five days a week with a group of people that we work with, we're going to influence them as well as be influenced by others. As we consider how to lead our teams well, we first have to develop our leadership skills. Um, Another book, again, that I just cannot suggest enough is that Developing the Leader Within You by John C. Maxwell. It is really jam-packed with information and activities to help you develop into a leader. As leaders, our teammates need to believe in us, um, not just in the goal, but they have to believe in us that we can see it and, and that we are trying to accomplish it. And then they must know and trust that we will do our best to lead them well. I have been in organizations and have seen organizations that led by intimidation. And even if I wanted the same outcome as my leaders, I was not bought into them as the ones to get us there. Negativity, yelling, shame, and embarrassment were not the character traits that any of my colleagues nor myself were motivated by. Conversely, I've been on teams where the leader was someone committed to the same outcome as the team. They rolled up their sleeves and they were, if you will, in it with us. They were involved. They investigated opportunities. They strategized and asked for input. And they made a path forward that brought everybody along. We tweaked the course as we went, but we all knew that we were in it together. This is the type of team that people want to be a part of. This is the type of team that can weather the storm together. And this is the type of team that supports each other. This last example is the one that hopefully most of us are wanting to build into our company. And I can tell you this, like I say with profit, it's not going to happen by accident and it won't happen without intention. And so first, we have to really define what type of leader do we want to be? Here are some questions for reflection. How do you want to lead? What good examples of leadership have you seen or witnessed? What did the leaders you observed do that you currently don't do? Where can you focus your efforts to become more of the leader your team needs? What does your team need at this time? How much time are you willing to spend investing in your leadership skills? Who can you bring along with you to carry the leadership load so that it's not all on you? What next step can you take? When I um, started thinking about this a while back, one of my uh, best friends asked me, Michelle, what kind of leader are you striving to be? And I wrote up five kind of phrases for the type of leader that I want to be. And mine are kind leader, a gracious manager, an active listener, a decisive action taker, and a supportive guide. And I I have that on a blue sticky stuck on my computer so that as I work with teammates and as I work with my clients and as I'm working with people that I'm I'm influencing, even if not intentionally influencing them, I am doing everything I can to be a kind leader, a gracious manager of my time, of my resources, you know, of people, whatever it is I'm managing, an active listener. I'll tell you something that's been interesting. Sometimes it's about actively listening to myself to that voice inside that's easy to put off, but actively listening to others. A decisive action taker, knowing what I need to decide, when I need to do it, and having the information available. And then a supportive guide. Sometimes we don't know it all. Many times we don't know it all. And so for me, being a supportive guide is trying to say, we have space to figure it out. If you haven't taken time to determine how you want to lead and how you want your leadership style to be described, that's a good place to start. Another great book on leadership is The Go-Giver Leader by Bob Berg and John David Mann. Leadership principles are shared in a story method. Um, The Go-Giver is also a great book by them as well. In chapter three of The Go-Giver Leader, leadership is framed this way, and I quote, The single biggest challenge to any organization is the constant cloud of fear and doubt that swirls around the heads of the people involved. As a leader, your job is to hold fast to the big picture, to keep seeing in your mind's eye with crystal clarity where it is you're going. 
that place that right at this moment exists only in your mind's eye and to keep seeing that even when nobody else does. And so that's what it means to create a a strategy or cast a vision. Creating this vision is great, but it's the holding to it and seeing it come to fruition that's key. They talk about in the Go-Giver Leader, it's the holding of it, right? Not the creation, but the holding. Think about when you're you know, looking to build a house. It's not enough to go build the plans. It's not enough to build a design plan or to sketch out the next window treatment you want to make or the next thing that you want to tackle or do. It's the holding on through it that gets you there. It's the, um, we've talked about this before on other podcasts. It's about not just being dedicated to the outcome, but to the process of attaining that outcome, that day-to-day where it gets hard, when the excitement of casting the vision is in the past, and we're now trying to trudge through the mud to make it happen. The leader is the one that keeps trudging and keeps pointing you to the vision and working alongside you with the vision. It's the person that you trust to help get you there. And so moving forward with intention towards the larger goal and influencing the team to come with you, even if they can't see what you see, um, knowing that they trust in your ability to see and to guide them. Being a great leader always goes back to influence. Having a strategic plan allows for a vision to be cast and seen by your leaders and then by those that follow. And then working towards that vision and supporting your team in that work creates an environment where people want to be. Don't let the busyness of the day-to-day keep you from actively taking part in leadership activities. Build up the leader in you and then others on your staff, and that actually will build up your team. And then when you have to do the work, you're doing it together. John C. Maxwell has another book called How Successful People Lead. It is small and it is a really mighty resource. Take some time to reflect on these questions from earlier and make a plan to be intentional about leadership in your firm. Be the leader your team needs. Every day here at Scarlet Thread Consulting, we support our clients in becoming better leaders of their firms. And like many of you, they're managing teams that are growing. Some teams are new and some are well-established. And they've built businesses over time that are large enough that multiple layers of leadership need to be created. And as the owner, just like you know, we can't do it all. Having these conversations are necessary to the formation of solid business, and that's where we thrive. If you're interested in having support for your growing company, apply for a discovery call at scarletthreadconsulting.com. You can also download some case studies from our website under the Client Results tab. Choose to lead your team intentionally, which like profit doesn't happen by accident. Profit is a Choice is proud to be part of the designnetwork.org, where you can discover more design media reaching creative listeners. Thanks for listening and stay creative and business minded.